everyone, my name is Sam. Thanks for checking out this video. If you get to the end and liked it, then hit the thumbs up, the subscribe, and the bell notification button. As always, monthly wrap up. I wanted to tell you all the books that I read, any spotlights, and then any generally sarcastic, jokey, but sometimes accurate uh, lessons I took away from this month. And hopefully it will stay like kind of sunny right now where I am. It's doing this weird thing for the past like six hours where it downpours for like 10 minutes and then it goes sunny and then it suddenly downpours again for another 10 minutes. It's weird. I mean, we uh, love the rain right now. It avoids fires, but like, <sighs> yeah, this month I read Lady Smoke by Laura Sebastian, Light Years by Cass Morgan, Nevermore, The Trials of Morgan Crow as a reread. The Ice Monster by David Walliams. Every Heart a Doorway by Shannon McGuire. Going Postal by Terry Pratchett as a sort of reread. I read this forever ago and just didn't remember it. Earth's End by Elise Kova as a reread. Water's Wrath by Elise Kova. Stolen Songbird by Danielle Jensen. The Tiger at Midnight by Swati Tirdala. This book was amazing. Someone else please read it. White Rose by Kip Wilson as an arc. Crystal Crowned by Elise Kova. The Royal Art of Poison by Eleanor Herman. The Train to Impossible Places by P.J. Bell. Sion of the Fox by S.M. Bieko, or no, sorry, S.M. Becco. Apparently it's Becco according to the audiobook. Game of Stars by Sayatani Dasgupta. The Casebook of Sherlock Holmes by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. Wondersmith, The Calling of Morrigan Crow by Jessica Townsend as a reread. The King of Atolia by Megan Whalen Turner. Once and Future by Amy Rose Capetta and Corey McCarthy. Let's Call It a Doomsday by Katie Henry as an arc. Breadcrumbs by Anne Ursu. The Assassination of Brand Wang Spurge. I think that's how you say it. It's a very weird title. Night Books by J.A. White. Eyes Like Stars by Lisa Manchev. Allied by Amy Tintera. And lastly, Crazy Rich Asians by Kevin Kwan as a re 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 read. This and Nevermore just continuously re read. So for spotlights, least su least favorite, most surprising, and then favorite or favorites. And this month, I feel really terrible about the one that I like the least, but I know it's not just me based on all the reviews I'm seeing. I really, really wanted to, like, go against that. And, like, there are some books where, like, I see people review it and, like, just trash it and I read it. I'm like, y'all are wrong. But unfortunately, people weren't really wrong about all of the reviews for Once and Future by um, Amy Rose Capetta and Corey McCarthy. This just fell really flat and I was so disappointed because there was a lot of LGBT rep in here like and there it's done well but the characters other than the fact that they are of this sexual orientation I really don't know anything about them and I talked about that in my review that it's not it's not bad it just by no means lived up to the hype of sci-fi King Arthur queer space retelling or the James Patterson imprint. Uh, they tend, like, especially because everyone just associates that with Stalking Jack the Ripper, and that's such a widely adored and enjoyed series. And this just wasn't it. Like, it just lacked a lot. And I don't know if maybe James Patterson doesn't want bigger books and maybe they had to mass edit this, but there is so much missing from the story and from the characters. Like there's just so much absent and I'm hoping it's, I mean, I hope, but I also don't hope like if they were told to edit out all that stuff to make it shorter, like shame on the, the, the whoever made them do that. Cause it took so much away from the story. If they were never in there to begin with, that's something that the authors need to really focus on for the sequel. Um, it's, it, it just, there's so much information that it's just missing. And it was just so immensely disappointing, unfortunately. And I think my most surprising book this month, I kind of like tossed back and forth. I was like, I don't know that anything really surprised, surprised me. But I think in, the, you know, that it's not a super high level. None of them like blindsided me at a left field of being super good or super bad. But I think, let's call it a doomsday, was my, was, had some surprises. And I, it helped me realize. I've never actually read a book with a main character who's Mormon. I know the general, like, gist of what Mormonism is. You know, it's not really, I think I know one Mormon in my whole lifetime. It's not a large, there, there just really wasn't any Mormons that I ever, like, everyone was just Catholic or atheist where I grew up in Ontario, or sorry, I shouldn't say that. There's a lot of Hinduism and Buddhism, and just Mormonism isn't just really, isn't that big here in Canada, you'll get a couple pockets of it. And I do know someone in Northern Alberta now, but 
that's I just don't really know anyone and I just know the general gist of what Mormonism is and then all of the information that came out when it was like Mitt Romney running for president and like they can't drink coffee which like that would be a hard immediate no for me <laughs> to live off of coffee but I actually do have a friend who is a former Mormon so I was curious to see I want to know what she thinks of this book especially but it was just interesting that I'd realized that oh I've never read a book with that and it did immediately kind of challenge my kind of view of Mormonism. I never really thought of Mormonism having like a liberal-ish of within there. Like my understanding was always like you just don't, you know, you, they tend to, you know, be homeschooled, be super kind of hovered over by the parents to make sure they never interact with things outside of Mormonism. And they're very, if you leave any of these, if you, if you don't follow any of these rules and then you're outcast and then you don't talk to your family anymore, which really wasn't the case for this main character. She interacts with all kinds of different people. They are relatively open-minded in terms of LGBT. And so it is brought up though one person did leave because they were a part of that um their, that community and they didn't feel like that meshed within there but then you meet people within the Met, the mormon community in her world the main character's world and it's like okay yeah some people are gay like some people are bi some people are trans whatever that's not my business and so that was kind of it, it was surprising to me and i and I don't know why I thought that about Mormonism, because we have, you know, I, I've interacted my whole growing up life of people within the Catholic faith who are, you know, from the conservative to the liberal stream, as well as people in the Muslim community like that. So I don't know why I, my brain went like that, but that was just interesting. If you hear snoring again, it's because, as I have said, Watson always suddenly decides to sleep whenever I start filming. Anyways, my favorites is sort of a bit of a toss up this month. White Rose and The Tiger at Midnight. Now, if you twisted my arm and made me pick one, it would probably be White Rose, which I was floored by because it's the first book I've ever read in verse. But they're both so freaking good and so different. I also want to include like my favorite quote again, because it's in my like little planner thing. And actually this one like really jumps out to me still. It's from White Rose. It was in the arc, but I believe that I saw somewhere that it was also quoted and they ha didn't read an arc. So I think it's in the finished copy. But on page nine of the arc, there was, I might not be the best behaved girl. I don't want to be the prettiest girl, but I am most decidedly the smartest girl. And I feel like that is just like how we need to raise children and Something I also want to like start doing to like prop myself for buying less books and borrowing less books. Or no, buying less books and borrowing more books is like counting how many books I read in a month from the library. So this month I read four physical books um, that were from the library, What's in Future, The Royal Earth Poison, I Like Stars, and Sion of the Fox. I also borrowed digital copies of Every Heart a Doorway, Stolen Songbird, Game of Stars, and the assassination of Bran Winsberg. So like, I'm really happy that's what, eight or nine um, library borrows this month, which on my TBR, I borrow other ones and then sometimes I read them and sometimes I don't. But like, I read just this month, like eight or nine books from the library. So huzzah. So this month I did like a really horrible job of like tracking the lessons. Normally I have my Excel spreadsheet and like when I finish a book, I like jot down a thought about it. And then I kind of connect them at the end. And then like this month, I don't know what, I just totally blanked and forgot about it. And then like sat down to start filming this video. I was like, oh my God, I don't have any lessons written down. <laughs> so apologize in advance if that is. More of this is just like accomplishments slash goals. First of all, I finished the Air Awaken series. Huzzah. I reread the Novermore series. There's only two books in it right now, but like hikey, whatever. I read Night Books, which I've wanted to been read for like, I wanted to read for like forever. I'm caught up on the Ash Princess series. I am, you know, I just, I also finished the Rune trilogy. Like I'm like really like pleased with everything I finished this month, but also I finished the Sherlock Holmes anthology. Like the handbook of Sherlock Holmes, that was the last story in this whole 1200 page anthology. Took me a year and a half. This is honestly the first classics I can ever remember reading of choice. Like I had to read uh, Emma in university, the Jane Austen one. I've never been a fan of like, I, I understand the purpose and the point of them, but I find like Jane Austen stuff kind of boring in all honesty. Shoot me in the comments if you want, but like, I just find a lot of that classic-y stuff just doesn't translate well. So if I'm not analyzing it, then I'm like, meh, what's the purpose? Watson, why are you snoring so loud? I finished it. I'm taking it as an accomplishment. I'm taking that and like, using it as a reason to justify like eating sushi at one night or something like that. Like that was like, 
a freaking accomplishment. The Royal Art of Poison made me realize that maybe I do have to verbally say this. I thought this was just an assumed thing, but do not spend large sums of f money that is basically like the for a fortune, just like a country's GDP in a year, basically, on purchasing mythical creature body parts, assuming that you can use them to counteract poisons. This isn't a lesson, but it's just like information alert that I need everyone to know that I reread Nevermore and Wondersmith this month, but also we are getting book three, Hollow Pox, in February. I believe it's February 6th. I know I had to explain to a bunch of American friends, uh, because she posted, um, so I'll, I mean, I'll insert a clip here, but it said Wondrous News 0602 Hollow Pox, The Hunt for Morgan Crow, the third book coming out called The Hunt, Hollow Pox, The Hunt for Morgan Crow. So 0602 everywhere else means the 6th of February, 2020. And all my American friends thought it was June 2nd. <laughs> so everywhere else, just be aware that's a fe that's February, like that's February 6th. I don't know why everyone does it different. It's just America does it differently. Like that's just an explanation for three quarters of the things in the world. But if you are a reader of the Nevermore series and you're like, Hollow Pox, awesome, coming out in June. No, it comes out in February. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Watson won't stop snoring. <laughs> like he's out for the damn count right now. <laughs> I talked about this in a weekly wrap up, but in case you don't watch my weekly wrap ups or you just need a reminder. Oh yeah, the sun just like totally just disappeared a couple seconds ago cool it's gonna start raining again anyways trash books like there's they're they're not people aren't crapping on them when they deem something a trashy book okay let me like we need to just have this discussion of like there are things that are have like cultural value or like representational value and then there's books that are just trash they're basic they're there's nothing extra there's no they don't offer any real discussion on anything culturally they're just trashy books that you can unplug your mind it's like the bachelor okay it's well i don't like that show anyways but like it's as i've said before it's your mcdonald's it's your kardashians it's your things that you know are really not doing much good for you but you just mass repeatedly a lot of the time consume them okay don't come at me that there's like you can only have trash or tolstoy there's there's lots in between and there are books which are just trashy we all like trashy reads sometimes okay so when i say give me some trashy reads recommendations don't come at me saying i don't talk about guilty pleasures anymore or there's it's just modern what do you only read tolstoy no there's a large spectrum there that you're pretending doesn't exist okay and this is a trashy read okay let's be real i love this book but it is not the equivalent of the hate you give okay like this just let's be real okay and the hate you give is not the same as tolstoy okay like it's just yeah okay we need to just talk about this like the superiority complex of like there's such things as trashy reads okay that's just real. I'm sorry, but like I would classify Fifty Shades of Grey in there. I've never actually read. No, that's not true. I think I tried to read a chapter of that book and couldn't get through it. But some people just thoroughly enjoyed that book despite the immense problematic nature of it. That's their trashy read. Okay, whatever. That gives you, you do you. If that's what helps you, if that's what unplugs your brain, go for it. Don't like judge people for using terms like trashy reads. Also, I'm a librarian, so I know that I'm right on this. <laughs> As if that profession suddenly means I can't be wrong on anything. As like stars just reminded me that I continue to ask for Shakespeare retelling, Shakespeare settings. I need more of that, please. I like there was an Assassin's Guide to Love and Treason, which is like kind of a Shakespeare setting retelling sort of. It wasn't that great of a book, but like it it was there at least. And then there's like Eyes Like Stars, which is kind of like that, but like a magic -y element. And then there's like Speak Easy, Speak Love, which is like freaking amazing retelling. I need more of that. Please give me more Shakespeare retellings. Having reread and rewatched Going Postal this month and then having watched Good Omens. Well, technically I think, no, I started watching it in May. I finished it at the beginning of June, whatever. Shout out to Amazon and like, I think it was like BBC. No, it wasn't BBC. Sky, Sky One. Yeah. There are such good things as good book to movie adaptations slash TV adaptations. I wish more people would do it as maybe it's like Terry. Pr no, maybe it's like Neil Gaiman is just like and Terry. Pr no, maybe it's Terry Pratchett. Maybe Terry Pratt. No, both of them. Oh, my God. I can't keep a straight head. Honestly, I think Neil Gaiman and Terry Pratchett are just like blessed because they're like they were like legitimately good beings from like what I've seen. But like Stardust freaking loved that book to movie adaptation. Uh, I mean, I literally have a tattoo that's a Stardust on it. Going Postal was good. Coraline. Oh, freaking love that book and freaking love that movie. I was obsessed with the movie for forever. And then Going Postal. Like, 
they are just I don't know what maybe they're always all like the screenwriter on that but that doesn't always guarantee a good adaptation like ready I mean I want to wonder if it's like maybe they were but Terry Pratchett is dead so I mean like he couldn't do anything well Neil Gaiman would have been there with good omens but like maybe they've always like been like pushy as screenwriters to keep it authentic I mean like that doesn't always guarantee a good adaptation like looking at you ready player one because like whew, that was not a good adaptation you can think what you want about the movie but if you've read the book that's not a good adaptation and I just I have very little faith in adaptations at this point like there's few exceptions at this point like the series of unfortunate events Netflix not the original movie attempt and then like crazy rich Asians was a really good adaptation and I don't know what's going to happen with the Leigh Bardugo series. That kind of makes me extremely nervous. And uh, I don't know. What else is being adapted? I feel like I hear about a lot of things being optioned, but they never end up actually getting adapted. Ari Shah got optioned. I don't know if that'll ever happen. Um, Nevermore, I believe, got optioned. I don't think that'll really ever happen, but that would be cool. Um... Oh, the someone's doing like an animated sort of adaptation of Nevernight, which I'm curious to see how that is. But like, I just feel like there's been very few like adaptations do like justice. And even like recently, I've been rewatching like all the Harry Potter movies in the TBR and Beyond group. We do like group chats and watch it. And like, they missed a lot of stuff. Like as a kid, I could appreciate that. But having recently, like last year, reread the full series and then going back, I'm like, wow, they shaded Draco's Malfoy a lot. Like his mom, sorry, Draco Malfoy's mom. She had like a real like explanation for everything she did in the books and then she's just kind of like this evil stepmom in the movies like they just kind of were like nah we don't need her and like they just kind of ignored peeves which have been in such good comic relief i'm getting off off base here sometimes good movie adaptations can happen from books to television or movies it's rare but i feel like i have 100 percent faith now if i ever hear of a neil gaiman or a terry pratchett thing being optioned i have faith that it's not going to be absolutely abominable also, shout out to Amazon Prime. Oh, I forgot about American Gods, too. I haven't watched the full season one of that, and I'm not totally sure why they're doing a season two. But, like, I, the first few episodes, I think, were, like, they managed to, like, ex, like to zone in on, like, the, the vibe and the feeling of American Gods and transfer that to TV. So, like, shout out to Amazon Prime. They've done a really good job with Neil Gaiman adaptations, specifically. Scan of the Fox helped me realize that I literally can't think of a good book that I've read and, like, really thoroughly enjoyed that's set in Canada. It just doesn't happen. And finally, Once in Future, Breadcrumbs, and what else did I read? Night Books this month made me realize, keep giving me retellings. I'm just... I've said this before. I'm like at capacity for my Beauty and the Beast, my Cinderella, my Snow Whites. I've had enough. You need to do other things. Go and do the Rumpelstiltskin, the Hansels and Gretels, the, I don't know, just other stuff. The Shakespeare's. Just do something, but uh, just halt it. At least give us a couple years off without those like signature Disney retellings. I think we've kind of reached the capacity to for how much originality you could bring into it. Um, or if you're going to do it, like go Akatar route and bring in like a billion other things that like, I don't even know what they're called anymore. Like the fairy tales from all these other places. Cause then you can get me, but like other than a curse of dark, dark, a curse of dark and lonely, there is literally not a good media of history telling out there that I can think of, but please just stop with the Disney stuff. So those are all the books that I read this month, my thoughts, and then everything else that that was. I will make sure to link all of these books in the description down below and I will also link all of my social media. If you follow me, I will follow you 